Okay, so one thing that I didn't mention when I was talking about this table 11.3 is that the rotational inertias that w are uh, derived over here are for are about axes through the center of mass. So that's very specific. Okay, as you can see, all these axes are are through the center of mass. Okay, and then what we were doing was after this. So let's see. For example, in this one, that yeah, that was through the center of mass. This one was through the center of mass. But then this guy, remember this in the previous video, um, for a uniform rod, if we considered, uh, if we considered the, the axis of rotation over there, then that is not through the center of mass for this specific one. And so we ended up just calculating it as normal. But there is actually a nice way of determining, calculating the uh, rotational inertia about an axis that is not on the center of mass, just like, just like this was. Okay, there's, a, there's another nice way. And that is called the parallel axis theorem. Okay, what does that mean? It means that if you want to calculate the rotational inertia about any axis that's parallel to the center of mass, the axis passing through the center of mass, then all we need to do is determine the rotational inertia um, about an axis passing through the center of mass, which we can we can often get from that uh, table. Okay, this these are the inertias passing through the center of mass. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Oh dear. And then what we need to do then is add the second term, which is m d squared, where m is the 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 total inertia of the object, and d is a perpendicular distance. It, it, is the, it is the distance between the two axes. Okay, so let's look at this example. So use the parallel axis theorem to calculate the rotational inertia of a uniform solid rod of inertia m length l. So it's exactly like that previous question. Okay, the previous question, but um, the previous question gave ex us exactly the same rod and gave us the same axis <clears throat> perpendicular to the length of the rod and passing through one end okay so so we had passing through the one end so how are we going to do it using the parallel axis theorem well it's equal to the rotational inertia about the center of mass plus md squared so remember the rotational inertia about the center of mass was given by one over 12 ml squared and then plus the total mass the total inertia uh, d squared and what is d d will be the distance from the axis passing through the center of mass to this axis over here which is l over 2 okay and you see you get exactly the same answer as what i got ml squared over 3 so there's ml a third ml squared so I obtain the same answer in checkpoint 1110 by directly working out the integral. Okay, so it's very nice if you've got a table. If this is a, if this object is found in that table 11.3, all you need to do is go and read it off the table. Okay, then you get this first term, and then you need to calculate m d squared. Okay, so if it's over there, for example, uh, you you add m which is the total mass and then you calculate this distance between these two axes anywhere on the on this rod and you square that distance and you add it and you're going to get the uh, rotational inertia about whatever point you have chosen okay i hope that makes sense